Transport rules provide you with an almost limitless ability to control messaging in your Exchange server organization, but you should always carefully plan your transport rules to ensure that they behave as intended, otherwise you could accidentally delete messages or deliver messages to unintended recipients. So when you're creating your rules, really you just need to consider what you're going to do with them. And what will happen here is as we send emails through the hub transport functionality of our Exchange organization, the transport rules do something with that mail message based off content sender, recipient, and so on. So what we'll do is we'll create a new transport rule. So all we'll do here is we'll click on our plus. And as you can see, there's quite a few different things we could do here. So we can create a new rule, which is what we're going to do. I can apply rights protection to messages, apply disclaimers, bypass spam filtering, and there's quite a few things down the list here. Send the message to the moderator. It's quite a useful one. Restrict messages by sender or recipient. Restrict managers and their direct reports. But what we'll do here is we'll create a new rule. And then with our new rule, what we're do, going to do here is we're just going to call it test rule. And what I want to do with this test rule is I want to apply this rule if. And I want to apply it if, and as you can see, yet again, lots of settings. So the sender is, recipient is, sender is located, recipient is located. But what I want to do here is I want to do it if the subject or body includes a specific word of password. So we'll click OK here after we've added it. And do the following. What we want to do here is we can forward the message for approval to, redirect the message to somebody else, reject the message. Yep, that's the one I'm going to go for. And uh, what I'm going to say here is specify the rejection. Reason is you shouldn't be sharing passwords. Right, so you shouldn't be sharing passwords. So let's click OK. Right, then what we'll do here is we will audit this rule and we'll do this as high and choose a mode for this rule. We will enforce it. We won't bother testing it, we will enforce it. Let's go for the more options. Under the more options as well, other things I can do as well as add additional conditions, add additional actions. We can add an exception. So if the message is sent from our administrator to somebody else, we'll, uh, we won't bother rejecting that. However, real world, that's certainly something I wouldn't be doing. And then the properties of this rule we've already set. And let's just activate this um, rule and we'll activate it today, 21st of August, 2013. And if we scroll down a little bit further, we won't bother changing any of the other defaults. So we'll just save this off. Now we've saved this, what we need to do is test it. So let's just go to our client machine and try to send an email with the subject of password. All right, so what we'll do here is we'll create a new mail. We'll send this mail to Amra, and what we'll do here is we'll just uh, call this, hope this helps, and my password is, and then we'll just put in the password, and then we'll click send. All right, so that's been sent off, so now what will happen is it'll go through the various message transport, and then what we should get back is we should get back in our inbox a delivery rejection which we have so Microsoft Outlook undeliverable hope this helps why did that fail you shouldn't be sharing passwords so straight away now he's going to get a bit upset because he's going to think that somebody's reading his email specifically the administrator he'll ring up and start complaining bitly the administrator will then point out well sorry it's actually in our IT policy that we can read your email however the system automated this and that's the end of this demonstration thanks very much